this video is going to have a look at vaccines. You're going to have a look at what vaccines are, what immunizations are, how they work, and whether they're useful, what the pros and cons of them are. So Edward Jenner was the person that discovered what vaccines were. He was born in 1749 and died in 1823. Now his main discovery was the fact that milkmaids didn't get smallpox. And he wanted to know why. So he made his discovery in 1796 and he found out why smallpox didn't affect milkmaids. And in a way that probably wouldn't be allowed today, he used an eight-year-old boy called, called James Phillips and he took a the pus from a cowpox blister and rubbed it onto the skin of this eight-year-old boy. The kid got a mild fever, that was all. Then once he'd recovered, he did the same with the pus from a smallpox blister and he didn't get any symptoms. He was perfectly safe. Now, the question is why? So to understand what a vaccination is, we need to have a look at what happens when a vaccination occurs. So they will take a pathogen, a weak form of the virus, and they will inject it into the blood. As soon as they do that, the pathogen is in the blood, a lymphocyte comes along, which is another name for a white blood cell, a white blood cell that produces antibodies. So what they do is the pathogen comes along, the lymphocyte comes near to it, and you'll see that they have little parts that attach onto the pathogen. They will produce antibodies that are specific to that pathogen and then reproduce. They will divide and conquer until there are enough of them to take out the pathogen. These antibodies, these little things, will come along and they will attach onto the pathogen itself. Once they do this, it helps to destroy the pathogen itself, kills it and wipes it out. Then what happens is some of these cells will remain as memory cells in case it comes back. And then as soon as that happens, you become immune. These cells are called memory lymphocytes. So just a bit of a recap then. First of all, you get infected, so you become ill. The virus gets into the body, and then a pathogen will come along. It will produce antibodies, and those antibodies help to kill the virus. This will take quite a long time. But eventually the virus will die, and you become better. But on the secondary infection, those memory cells there produce the antibodies straight away. It remembers them, and you can attack the virus straight away, which makes you feel a lot better a lot quicker. And that's what we call a memory lymphocyte. So this graph shows you that as you start to become infected, the, it takes a bit of time for the antibodies to start to produce. So the x-axis going up shows you the number of antibodies in the body. So as you get healed, the number of antibodies stay there. So then you get exposed again, the antibodies produce straight away and in more numbers, which means that it becomes a lot quicker and a lot easier for you to be healed. So the final little bit then is having a look at the pros and cons of immunization. So if you have a large, large group of people, a population, and one person becomes ill, if you haven't got an immunization, they haven't had a vaccine, it's very, very easy for that to spread. So it can be passed on person to person to person through many, many different ways. This is called an epidemic. But if you were to give out immunizations and the same person becomes ill, if they've had that immunization, they're highly likely to not be able to pass it on, which means less and less people get it and the disease itself doesn't spread. Now this is a fantastic thing and it virtually led to smallpox being completely wiped out. There are some downsides to it though. So for example, the immunizations don't always work. So you can still become ill from it. And there are some side effects, which are rare, but you can have things like seizures, fever, and so on. As I said, these are rare, don't always happen.